I don't think enough people are exposed to, hey, man, in the dirt world, if you go and win, you're making money, which is like unheard of. Yeah. In in almost every other form of motorsports. It, it blows my mind that people are people are blind to that, you know, and um I actually you know, we're talking about how the the sport of or the future of the sport is going forward. Um so High Limit just started a sprint car series and uh, in the dirt world it's like massive that they're gonna compete with the world outlaws and um I think they have a four year plan or a three year plan that um Basically, like the long story short of it is if, if you finish in the top, if you if you sign on to race the whole series this year and you finish in the top five in points, you're guaranteed a charter uh, for the following year. And by t- by the third year, they want to give the chartered teams uh, 50% of the streaming revenue. Oh, wow. So, and that's, that's a so charter, huge. like a cup, like a cup charter. Yeah. Okay. But you have to earn it. Like, yep. I think the cup stuff is you all sold it. and bought. And, yeah. Um, the the high limit deal they're gonna they're gonna make you earn it and that's uh, that's a business plan that I think that is good you know for the for the future it's yeah it's something that you know you you have to go and you have to race now and you have to spend the money now and hopefully it turns into something where the charter you know gives gives the teams back the money that they spend to go on the road so that's that maybe maybe that's what we need you know mm. maybe we need to split the streaming revenues up or um, I'm not sure what the TSN contract is for uh, the Pinties deal. It's on TSN all the time, but um, maybe that's what what needs to happen between the race teams to make it profitable. Because it, I just don't see people lining up to do it. You know, it's not like yeah, it's yeah. not like they're sending cars home. You know, even weekly racing, there's in dirt racing too, where it is, you know, where you can make some money if you run good. It's still there's there's 18 cars weekly, 19 cars weekly. Now you go to a bigger race and there's 75 80 cars at dirt week so um how many guys make the main at dirt week i think they start 40 cars so yeah. i think they qualify 35 and then five are given out on provisionals you know yeah. whether it's somebody that signed on to to follow the whole series throughout the year doesn't make the race or a past champion or i'm not sure how they do it but fortunately for us we haven't had to rely on those yeah. those late start or late starting positions but um but yeah, man 30 guys pack up and go home yeah, and and the sportsman division, I think that even more, you know, maybe maybe they had 120 cars this year, and I think that 30 started that race too. So 90 <laughs> guys went home. Wow, which is it's pretty wild to think of, you know. Yeah, I mean that's that's cool. It's it's a little bit of a double edged sword, you know. <laughs> you drive all the way to Quebec City or something, and then you got to go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's where you got to protect your own guys. You know, the guys yeah. that like. If you're coming from from here to Quebec City, you know you're pretty much guaranteed that you're going to start the race. Right. And, um, you hope that obviously you don't want to rely on the guaranteed starters. Now I've I've had to use a couple because we blew a motor up in Quebec. We had to use we blew one up in the heat race, and then we were starting deep in the Concy, and you know just we only have one car at that point because the other car is sitting in the trail with a blown up motor. So you kind of want to protect it and just start at the back, and um, you rely on that guaranteed starter, right? right. So. How much of your time, if any, um, you know, I'm sure now that you've got this, you know, awesome career and, and huge winning percentage, it's not as hard, but maybe back in the, you know, a couple of years back, how much time were you spending finding sponsorship? Was that actually a big part of it? Uh, for me, fortunately, Rob Swatsky, he, um, he has good partners with like, you know, what he does for business, um, so I think that a lot of it came from that and, mm. and, and my end of it was just keeping them happy, you know, going, going at the end of the year and going and talking to these people and thanking them and, um, giving them a gift, whether it's a picture or a, a plaque, you know, this year we got model cars made up with all these people's names on them and, you know, our, our stats from the year. And I made up like a little side panel kind of thing. But, um, for the most part, once you get them, you need to keep them happy and try and keep them so that they see why they're giving you all this money. You know, if you don't, if you don't communicate and you don't talk to these people and, um, you don't, you don't express your gratitude, they're, they're probably not going to come back and it's money they don't have to spend. You know, most of them get nothing out of it. Wayne Con owns a service center, garage towing business. And I think that, you know, he gets my, my family and my friends, you know, going there for, for a work on their car or gasoline. But for the most part, you know, the return on the dollar probably isn't very high. So, um, got to keep it so that they enjoy And same with crew guys, you know, you got to keep it so that they enjoy going to the races or else they're not going to do it. They all do it for fun. So, um, 
it makes it to the point where, you know, you got to be a pretty, pretty personable person. And, you know, even when you're mad and I, I'm very guilty of it in the garage when things aren't going the way we, we went to fire up a motor a couple of weeks ago and the starter was uh, getting stuck. So with a dirt modified, you would have to pull the motor and change the shims on the back of the flywheel. And, um, I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, man, I don't want to pull this motor. So I got all moody and, you know, everybody, we had a beer at the end of it and, you know, the guys that were still there, we were, we were BSing about it and laughing at me because I was moody over it. And I had to reach out for the guys that weren't there and say, Hey, I'm sorry. I was an asshole tonight, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it's funny. Huh? Uh, I assume you don't do any eye racing cause you're racing fricking every minute of the, of the day. I have like, never done uh, eye racing. I, I, um, during COVID, uh, my one crew guy, Corby, he, uh, he started an eye racing league for, for dirt modifieds and he was busting my nuts pretty hard about, about joining it. And, um, I think the, the biggest thing for me is I didn't have very good internet service at my house. So yeah. it was always like, it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a battle the whole time I try and do this. I don't even have internet that can stream Netflix. How am I going to oh, yeah. do eye racing? So now I'm on, I'm on Bell five and it's better internet, but I don't have time to, to yeah. get a computer. I don't even have a computer. I have a, I have the same laptop as you just for yeah. keeping, um, books and uh keeping track of how much money's coming in and out throughout the year but that's all i use that for that's uh it's my business stuff right right yeah you get enough reps every whatever wednesday to sunday yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know this time of year when you're when you're not racing so often you you want to maybe do i racing might keep you mm. in tune with things but um you know what i find works a lot like when i went to florida is uh snowmobiling like if i went snowmobiling you know, three or four weeks ahead of going racing, it just keeps your mind in tune with going fast and, and being sharp and kind of keeps you in shape. So I yeah. thought that that kind of helped, but, um, you ride, a, you ride a sled up, up here. 